Okay, so uh, let me get started. It's eleven o five. My name is Varun Malik. Eleven o five in Dubai, of course. My name is Varun Malik. Uh, I'm the CEO of a new age consulting firm called Consolidon. Uh, Consolidon is new age in the sense that we didn't take the traditional uh, the model the traditional model of growing a consulting firm. We set up in 2017, and what we decided to do was partner with a lot of subject matter experts from many different boutique consulting firms. Now, what that allowed us to do was grow very quickly. Uh, by the end of 2019, in about three years, we were about 500 consultants in the in the organization in the ecosystem and uh, we had delivered already 200 consulting projects across the gcc region um, 2020 was supposed to be a great year for us it was supposed to be a great year for many people of course everyone was looking forward to 2020 uh, it is going to be the year that was going to change it all you know the turn of the decade it brought with it a lot of excitement obviously things didn't turn out that way um so you know our organization we went through the initial shock in may uh, in march after the lockdowns uh, by april by the time we'd recovered we said uh, you know let's spend and we had a lot of excess capacity at that time so we said let's spend 20% of our excess capacity of our capacity in initiatives which will get the economy back on track okay one such initiative was what we started last year in 2020 the superheroes project where we got about 700 business leaders from across the gulf region to help small businesses and micro businesses get back on track 2021 we decided perhaps it's larger organizations that need a lot of support as well so with about 70 of the subject matter experts in our ecosystem we came up with this web summit called the connected insights web summit it's 7 days of webinars and panel discussions and workshops to help get the economy back on track and it's very many different topics today's topic i think is a very particularly very relevant one it's day 6 today and this is the third talk of day 6 it's on uh, careers and how they're changing in 20 uh, in in the 21st century um i have with me the ceo uh, of career guide surbi uh, so Uh, Surbi is going to be talking about, uh, you know, a topic with which is very close to her heart, uh, given that she has a platform of, uh, I don't know the exact numbers. I'll let her tell the exact numbers, but I think more than five thousand, six thousand career counselors on our platform, and it might be much more as well. So correct me, Surbi, later. Um, just a couple of quick housekeeping points. One is that we've made all of you here panelists, not just attendees, right? the reason for this is so that you can engage you can switch on your videos you can ask questions during the talk however please do stay on mute when you're not talking so that there's no background noise and disturbance to others but we'd certainly really like you to engage during this uh, during this talk um the second important point is please look out for the giveaways in 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 the chat right uh, so we're doing a few giveaways for example we have a workshop it's a paid workshop tomorrow from 6 pm to 9 uh, sorry 5 pm to 8 pm dubai time tomorrow uh it's on the dna of business uh we're doing a giveaway where three people who are attending this talk today can attend for free if they fill a short form uh we're also inviting speakers for the next edition of connected insights which will be in may uh so that's about it from me i'm really looking forward to this talk surbi and uh, uh over to you hey thank you varun thank you consolidon team for having me here and thank you to all my friends connected from different parts of the world here in india we are celebrating holi today to wishes to all of you and holi marks a new change actually uh, mythically that's how it's said i am surbi devra founder career guide and i'm here to talk to all of you about 21st century changes in careers and future of work i have some very interesting insights uh, in next 40 minutes but before that let me share who what i have been doing and my request to all the participants keep it interactive keep your questions flowing the way you shoot it to a couple of questions in the beginning of the sessions keep it flowing it in the chat i'll be taking it up 
as and when during the course of the conversation, during the course of the presentation. I'll also be addressing Sarita, your question and Demir's points which you pointed out, pretty interesting ones. So my request, keep it interactive, feel free to get in voice, feel free to get in chat and put questions, have objections, have your point of perspective. The topic which I'm sharing is very, very close to my heart. And because that's where the organization, the startup I founded Career Guide works towards. Uh, giving a background, I happen to be one of the, from the premier institute of India called Bits Pilani, engineer by degree. But that's, that's how you make careers. And I'm sure most of you would relate to is that not many times our career choices happen through chance, not by choice. Things which we are, put our, we have just been given and we don't really look forward, dig through it. And that's where the idea of career guide came in. Can we help the entire world, the users, students of the world figure out what's their right career courses, colleges, and connect them to the right platform? And it becomes very relevant conversation, especially when we are into COVID world where things have changed. In fact, uh, Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella said on the during the onset of the pandemic, the kind of technological advancement which World or Microsoft was looking for the in the next five to 10 years happened overnight due to COVID. Nobody ever expected the kind of technology adoption which COVID br will bring in. And all of you are educationists here. I see a lot of, the, a lot of you are coming from the education background. You would have realized how universities, institutions were so reluctant in adopting technology because there were challenges related to teachers. Uh, they were not very friendly with the technology, but pandemic brought in. And this will make you think much more about this topic because we as a generation have seen this change, which we never thought would happen. Now, uh, I have worked, uh, we as Career Guide have helped few million of students across the world. We deal with 3 million students every year. Uh, I have helped government of India set up several career counseling policies. And that's made me a bit credible to talk about this topic. Almost I'll be completing a decade in the space, doing a lot of research, guiding, helping building policies in the space. Well, this is a picture of a tanga a horse cart. It's not that the change which we are experiencing during the COVID or even before COVID, it was told that automation will bring about a change. Automation will take away job. Robots will take over. Industries will collapse. Humans won't have jobs. And we have been hearing these news and clip. Friends, Remember these changes keeps happening. It has happened in the past. It's going to happen in the future and it will keep happening. One of such examples that horses lost their jobs to wheels, to cars, to tractors, to trucks, to lorries, and they got no more, they are no more employed into the, uh, in the field. But does it mean that the jobs were lost? Or we realize that, no, we increase the jobs. We need now drivers, we need lorry drivers, we need uh, mechanics, we need specialists, all of it. We are humans, we are not horse. We humans can think, we humans can adapt. We humans have much more qualities, which are possibly similar kind of, I mean, with the example which I'm putting a horse would not have. And hence my request to all of you is, do not resist this change. Do not get into the hype of, will we lose jobs to machines? Will we lose jobs to robots? Will automation take away jobs of our kids? Actually not. Interesting thing is, uh, this is a World Economic uh, Forum's report, uh, which says, the jobs which are at risk of going obsolete due to high automation. Okay, I'll stop sharing my screen 
And here my question to all the panelists uh, and all the audience, what can you type down the kind of jobs which you think will go obsolete due to automation? I want each 55 of us to actually give me 55 different options which you think the jobs which will go obsolete due to automation. Yes, let's hurry. Let's see what's written on the chat. Driver. So Alvin says driver. So Jay, can you point out all repetitive jobs as in let's automative assembly, programming, accountants, uh, uh, to be lost, to be created. So exactly point accounting, cashiers. Uh, Sarita says they will change but not go out. Mayona says operation, what sort of operations? Manufacturing labor, clerical jobs, when we put data into the system, peons, okay? Any more names? We're gonna get more names? Yes, yes. Customer service, oh, okay, okay. So Mercy says customer service. Call centers, bots will be taking over, okay? Okay, yes. We are hearing about bots taking over. Job seeking assistance, AI will take over, recruiters will take over. Yes, thank you. That's been a lovely audience. That's been some inputs and some insights. Yes, according to World Economic Forum report, computer operators would have, which used to be a very, very fancy job in AT. I mean, it was so fancy a job. In fact, that gave rise to the entire middle class in India. Right, that's the highest risk of uh, automation. Clerks, cashiers, telemarketers, legal secretary. A lot of jobs will go to bots, automation, AI, payroll managers. Yes, you you guys uh, have got it. So there's their jobs, and and somebody mentioned. I think it's Debbie who mentioned that if 87 million jobs going to be lost, 90 million jobs or maybe more will come into picture. Then my question is, why is this whole hype? You know, if there are X number of jobs getting lost, but it's almost similar number of jobs getting created, then what's the all hype about? What are we worried about? So here we're gonna look at what we are worried about, you know, or if not worried, what we need to be prepared for. So interesting thing is, this is another uh, report, another statistics uh, by World Economic Forum. The industry, the workers who have been most affected due to the advanced advancement of technology and automation, and the maximum effect has come to the professionals into arts, entertainment, and recreation. Yes, maybe the mode has changed thanks to all the OTT platforms, maybe. But yes, there's certain job, there's certain industry, and this is this is where it says that these are the kind of industries which are facing maximum. The graph is here is fact facing uh, facing maximum obsolete. But yes, only constant thing is change, right? We humans are so good at that uh, thing. We understand that we cannot stop change, and that's how the world is all about. We cannot really expect everything to remain same throughout, and but we need to be prepared for it. Uh, these are again the kind of news clips I wanted all of you to focus and think about. Kind of jobs emerged during COVID nineteen. Did you really think vax? I mean, uh, the very new kind of jobs have come up. They are contact tracers. Yes, that's a totally new job which has come due to COVID nineteen. They are uh, people who are collecting samples for COVID testing. They are people who are sanitizing. There is totally new kind of jobs which has emerged and world does not see them getting away. A lot of focus have gone into biotechnology research. There are some clippings from Indian newspapers where how it is talked about 80% of engineers are unemployed. You know, how can we prepare for engineers for the jobs of tomorrow? Or saying, hey, Five lakh uh, MBAs applied for a peanut job, you know, which is like a basic, very basic, basic, uh, uh, just a uh, school pass out kind of a, you know, eligibility criteria they applied. So 
the whole question I have is, here we're talking about there will be so many new jobs coming up. Here, media is reporting that there are so many engineers and MBAs not getting, getting job, and hence they are employing even, uh, you know, filling vacancies even for peons. Red. And, and then there's a job and there's entire news by media that by 2050 world will be taken over by robots, right? So here I'll pause and I'll ask you all to reflect, where's the disconnect? Where's really the disconnect? There are more jobs coming up. Uh, there are people, uh, you know, everybody's talking about more jobs, uh, but at the same time, they're talking about uh, tech driven jobs, you know, and the robots taking over and they're talking about people not getting jobs, right? Somewhere, you know, it, it, when you think about it, you don't really understand what's happening. Do we have jobs? We don't have jobs. Do we have skills or we don't have skills? Uh, what, what is this thing which we need to direct? So Demi says the unskilled and low skills are at risk. Mohammed says worried about the new learnings. Demo says the brain is change ever looking for certainty. Well, that's interesting. In fact, I was reading somewhere that the brain is brain is wired and designed to live for survival, not for happiness. So maybe that strikes a vibe with what you said. So yes, these all the news clips are right. All the news clips are absolutely truth. You know, it's absolute truth. We would have robots by 2040 or maybe much, much before. You know, we do have people out there who don't know where they can go out and work. You know, there are no jobs for them. They don't understand. And yes, every day a new job is getting created, especially in post-COVID-19 world. Interesting thing is, here, all of us have to understand, and one of the participants did mention, and if you have to guide, if you have to, if you are a business owner, if you have to think in the direction of your business, if you are an educationist, you have to think in the direction of course designing, and if you are a counselor, teacher, uh, or any way connected to students, then what you have to communicate to your students is this. It is a fact that we will have more number of jobs in the future. What we see today, when computers came, we thought a lot of jobs are gone, but computer increased the number of jobs. Yes, we got digital, we got automation, we got AI, we got data entry, we got internet, we got app design and whole plethora, we got social media, what not. So, the absolute truth is we will have more number of jobs coming in the future. But another bitter truth is we would need people with higher logical thinking to execute those jobs. Yes, you need to think, understand this. We will need people with higher logical attitude, aptitude and higher emotional attitude and aptitude to get into these jobs. Low skill jobs are at risk. People who've been thinking that I can stick to a job for next 40 years, and yes, our parents have done that. They have stuck into a one job, utilizing one or two or three skills for 40, 40 plus years, right? That's a thing of past. Only thing which is needed today, the basic important skill which every single person needs to have is attitude of ongoing learning. A skill to keep learning is the most important thing because as of today, researchers even don't know what is the kind of skill would be required five years later. What is the kind of skill will be needed in the world? We know we need logical aptitude. We need aptitude to deal with machines and we need empathy and emotional intelligence to deal with humans with higher sensitivity. These are the two very important skills. 
So start grooming your students, start grooming your kids, and start grooming your employees and team for ever learning attitude. That's the most, most, most important skill. In fact, uh, yeah, here. So the broad learning with all the media hype it is, when they say that, hey, more jobs are there and people who are not getting jobs, that's a mismatch, mismatch of higher order thinking, mismatch of not being able to get into logical mode. That's the mismatch. So very important learning is lifelong employment with the same organization is thing of past. Maybe the word organization I should replace with, with a similar skill or with, le with, or with only one or two skills is a thing of past. No, that's not going to help us sail through. Another thing is the changes caused by technology. We cannot reverse it. We absolutely cannot, absolutely cannot reverse it. If we decide not to embrace technology, we're going to be like early men. New jobs and more and more new jobs are coming. These are two absolute truths. And for this, you don't have to stick to books. You have to be out there in the field, experiencing it. And all the college or all the educationists out here, my sincere request, push your students, push your kids, push your candidates out in the world for real life experience. In fact, the, how the careers also have changed. Uh, this is again a transition graph. Today, the careers of tomorrow is not teachers or profes professors. The teaching is getting more evolved more to education management. HR is getting more evolved to people's management, right? Uh, today, bank teller is more into financial services and management. Uh, a doctor is more towards healthcare management. So that's the evolution. Uh, IT software engineer's job is getting more evolved, more as a data analyst, as an AI researcher, as a machine learner coder. So that's, that's the evolution. It only means that the IT is not getting obsolete, but the lower level skills of IT is getting obsolete and the higher order skills need to be picked up. Yes. So this is the transition happening uh, across the sector, which is happening. So my couple of suggestions, a couple of pointers, uh, and maybe here I can read some of the chat messages, commented, okay, all right, that's Consolidum's message. Uh, okay, Sarita says, isn't that the skills required are changing? Once we equip students with these skills and adapt to it, adaptability to different types of jobs. Uh, no, Sarita, you're saying it's difficult to, uh, once they have equipped with a skill, it's difficult for them to change. Is that what you're trying to say? Okay, uh, right. So I think Sarita, uh, Sarita, okay. Maybe I'll take up that question, Sarita, on voice later on. Uh, so commit to lifelong learning. Yes, that's what I was saying. The cheat code for survival in the next 21st century skill is, or in the world is, commit to lifelong learning. Attitude of learning. I'm sure there, there are kids who comes up and says, or if you have employed a fresher who will say, I don't know how to do this. I have not been taught, it, taught in my course curriculum. And I'm sure you must have come across uh, this, tell me if you have come across such statements from freshers whom you employ and they say, hey, I don't know how to do this. Uh, you know, they have not taught me in this curriculum. Uh, they have not uh, taught this. Uh, anybody, anybody who came across a statement while recruiting, while training a new employee, or uh, while giving an assignment to a newcomer? Did you guys come through that statement? Please type it on chat. Yes, no, yes, no. Somebody saying, hey, I don't know how to do this because nobody taught me how to do this. Come on, come on, type it. Shibandi says, yes. Okay. 
Okay, so Shibanti is the only one who came across the statement. Maybe rest of us are dozing, is it? Okay, so this is a very, very common thing uh, which comes. Lemme says yes. This is the attitude does not work. Won't work. Won't work ever now going forward. If somebody says I have not been taught, you have Google University, you have YouTube tutorials. The ability to go figure out how to do a thing because all the information is out there. Somebody needs to commit to a lifelong learning. They need to know that what's been in their books does not matter. You have to be out there and on a daily basis, you have to, on, have to learn, right? If it requires, I wouldn't call it growth mindset, Jemir here. Uh, I would call it more like a learning mindset, right? Uh, so that might not be a growth mindset. So yes, committing to lifelong learning is the most important thing. If you are able to drive this point to all your entire team, to your employee, to your students, I think you have done 90% of your work as a leader. That's, that's such an important 21st century skill. Commit to lifelong learning. This is the only, only thing which will get them through. Four very important, important C's for 21st century skill. Critical thinking, creativity, collaboration, and communication. You cannot just do away with these four C's. Critical thinking, we have been talking about logical uh, attitude, logical approach of thing. Creativity is more about expression. Uh, it's about originality. It's more about ability to see a thing from a new perspective. Now you might say, hey, creativity. So one person can even end up sweeping a room also in a very creative manner. <coughs> creativity can be used anywhere. So creativity here, I don't mean fine arts, music, painting, but here I'm talking about originality, expression, new perspective, new way of thinking. Third very important C is collaboration. Very important. In fact, across the world, uh, uh, in fact, India has issued a new education policy where it has started talking about multidisciplinary approach, uh, where every individual student will get to, you know, study almost a lot of variety of things while they are into their college. Yes, collaboration, understanding from different fields, what the other person is bringing perspective on the table, what, what other person has the expertise. It's not possible to one person to have all the expertise, all the talent, or all the finest ideas or finest leadership thoughts. So the collaboration is very, very important third C. This is again an important skills which can be taught in universities and schools. Yes, collaboration can be taught. This is experiential not book driven, but yes, this can be taught by again, putting people out with early internships and with early you know, exposure to the real world, just not the book and exams and months. And the fourth most important skills is communication. Yes, communication. The most, most, most important thing will be communication, ability to put forth idea, I'm not talking about correct English or correct grammar, but the communication, please don't see it as, you know, absolutely fine grammar, absolutely fine language understanding. Communication is ability to put forth your idea. That's communication, right? Uh, so these days we see a lot of beautiful YouTubers communicating in via, you know, uh, all these uh, videos or cartoonist ends up communicating beautifully. So communication would mean, but, but here I also mean ability to interact with team members, ability to uh, interact with clients, ability to interact and put the perspective in place. So communication becomes very, very, very important. Uh, Yes, totally agree, Rajiv. Uh, first three C's are present in today's resources. Interesting, Rajiv, communication definitely is missing, whereas I see that 
even in the education system, uh, they're adapting to the first three C's also. But yes, uh, rightly mentioned. So these are very four important uh, C's, uh, which is part of 21st century new skill sets, which needs to be imbibed in every single person from employees to students to every to leaders. I think that's also a very important point. It also goes to leaders. I think this is my favorite point, the quasi entrepreneur attitude. If you have been able to develop this entrepreneurial attitude, if you have been able to get into this mode, I think you have almost done through even, you have almost imbibed these four C's and also you have imbibed this first commit to lifelong learning skills too. It's so important to have this entrepreneurial attitude, even if you don't want to have a startup. Even every single employee, if starts acting like an entrepreneur, things will change. Every single student starts looking their job from an entrepreneurial mindset. They will definitely build a growth mindset. Uh, if people start having entrepreneurial attitude in their day-to-day -day life, while they're solving even their life problems, things will become so simple and easy. Beauty of having an entrepreneurial attitude is it teaches you risk, it teaches you communication, it teaches you sales, it kills your fears, it makes you more, uh, it gives you radical thinking, even a risk attitude, uh, ability to reach out, approach. Yes, right, you mentioned intrapreneurs. You end up building a lot of intrapreneurs and Organization finally wins because you don't have to micromanage them. You don't have to set managers above them. And a person with an entrepreneurial attitude will always ride high in ladder. So my sincere request, advise every single person around you, be it a student, be it a fresher, be it a senior leader, to look and try to inculcate this entrepreneurial attitude. How can we do away with digital skills as an important uh, uh, 21st century skills? In fact, now this is becoming hygiene. You know, you need to have it. People won't even question it. You know, uh, without having digital skills, you are literally nowhere. It's more like the 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 thing. You know, every single person needs to have. They need to be comfortable with it. They need to be very, very comfortable with very small. They might sound small. How to make a digital drive, upload data, embrace all the digitization. And if you start talking to your students and freshers about adapting these digital skills early on, the more, the quicker you ask them to do, the better they will be acing their work life absolutely or their career life. So this is a very important, even for the mid-professionals, I would say digital skills is must. You no more can stay away from saying that, hey, I don't know how to use Zoom. I'm not going to do it. I still prefer face-to-face. -face. Or you can't say that, hey, I don't want to get into, uh, you know, I don't want to understand what Instagram is like. You know, I need to market. Half of the world is on Instagram. If you want your products to be out there, you have to be out there. So this has become more of a hygiene skills now. I'll take up a pause here for any comments, questions to be put forward. I'll take up a pause. I'll take up a pause to hear from people. <coughs> yes, yes. I want to hear comments. I want you to share some experiences if you have had with points we have mentioned, any real life experiences. I would want you all to come forward, share or type in chat. Are you there, Jeme? Some You have something to share, some real scenarios. Sarita, Shibanti, yes, Chinmay. Rajiv, anything? 
you felt that you came across somebody who had an entrepreneurial mindset and how they excelled or you felt that somebody was not willing to adapt to the kind of skill sets we are talking about and how they could not get where they wanted to anything anything you want to share hello yes who is this please share your name this is vinay vinay right yeah so i think uh, i agree with you the four c's you know uh, that's kind of summarize you know um, uh, everything you know because if you see yeah, i mean uh, this four skills like uh, your critical thinking uh, creativity right and uh, then your collaborations and communications i think these are the four skills uh, which is the kind of a you know skill for 21st century so if you, if anybody wanted to be you know successful i think these are the four mantras you know in any corporate world or you go anywhere you know so i think uh, i completely agree with you uh, these are the you know four points i think we should keep in mind to be successful in the you know i mean in your professional life or your personal life anywhere yeah sure. thank you sure uh, thanks vinay thanks for your comments uh, uh, sorry uh, i think i pinned vinay by mistake okay hani says the entrepreneur attitude might be the only way to retain talent in large corporations agree agree totally agree i think i'll take a, also i'll pick up a question which was asked in the beginning i think sarita that that was your question you talk, you talked about how uh, students are not able to interact face to face and everything is gone digital is this going to hamper their career and the growth did i get your question right sarita uh okay i think sarita is not around so meanwhile gina has a question do everyone need to be extroverts low in social skills means low in career wow that's a fantastic question low in social skills means low in career <coughs> yes and no i'll i'll try to answer this way communication skills is important do communication skills translate to social skills yes partly yes so if you are in a work setting and you do not really go out on a team outing right it will be very difficult for you to collaborate next time uh, because you do not share the kind of bonding maybe or you are hesitant uh, you have your own boundaries so collaborations will be difficult that's going to be one second if networking is a very important skills to grow in career so networking would mean you are reaching out to people you are talking to people uh, you know you are telling them you maybe look a bit want a business or you looking for a job or you help them so the networking skills also might be low so there's at times there are people who are not really socially advanced but they're good at networking business networking they're good at ensuring that okay i go out in a business outing so they learn the skill so when you teach tell people that it's okay if you're an introvert you don't like to party but if there's a company party be there because that's part of work and this is going to help so they adapt they develop so in personal life they still might stay introvert but in professional life they see it as a work in networking and all of it and they go ahead and do it so maybe i'll take it uh i might be called a good networker i have more than 7000 plus linkedin connect i make a point to meet a new person every week yes and during covid time i make a point to meet everybody on zoom if not face to face which is not possible but i don't think i'm very socially uh, a person who would go out and party and hang out with friends my inner circle is very very small so but this is something which can be always uh, picked up so as a business as a work skills that can be picked up i hope i answered your question i hope i answered gina your question right uh yes interesting so 
So digital skills I was coming to. In fact, I touched upon the word networking skills. So I have not pointed out in this presentation, but I definitely call networking skill as very, very important skills. Uh, Tanisha, how much time do I have? Because this is something which I really want to spend some time, but I also want to have some discussion and more Q&A and more perspective from the pan, uh, all the audience. Now, when we have looked at the kind of 21st century skills are there and we understand these changes are evident, we cannot reverse it, we cannot stay aloof from it, uh, and we need to look for a lot higher uh, order skill sets. Remember, I've been pointing it out, emotional empathy is equally important. That's, that's where you will find a lot of jobs. When you will have lots of machines to talk to, you will need a lot of real people to connect with. And I don't know if any one of you have watched the episodes of Black Mirror, highly, highly recommended to understand technology and emotional empathy and emotional intelligence. So Black Mirror is a kind of series which is futuristic, which says what the world might look in 30 to 40 years. And there are small episodes which talks about how human life has evolved and uh, change. So I, I, I'm sure you're going to enjoy this. So what can businesses can do to adapt to these things? So I have some uh, pointers which I would, uh, you know, suggest each one of you to implement in your organization or implement in your education practice. So definitely accelerating digitization of work process should be priority. And if you have a team, uh, do groom them on a monthly or a quarterly basis on digital skills, set up their sessions, make sure that every team member of yours is not afraid or averse to digital skills or wants to say no. Uh, I think remote skills is very important. I'm sure one of the consolidated insights would have taken up. In fact, uh, while, while we're talking about this, I was uh, listening to a webinar in the morning where the, uh, the speaker, the esteemed speaker talked about that uh, how one of the labor unions was so averse to the changes made in their setup. They were very, very negative. But once they started seeing the effect and these were those advanced operational mechanism and processes came in and when they started seeing the effect of it, they were the ones who became the pro advocate ambassadors of those processes, and they started requesting it. In fact, there's very another interesting examples were taken related to financial markets, how the products became obsolete and uh, organizations had to keep, keep on toes to get through it. So I think as an organization, even if you're an institute, university, or a company, or an individual, it's important to start thinking about digitizing your processes if you have not. And if there are certain areas where you have not thought about uh, digitization, uh, you should start looking at. Even start looking at your remote processes, that will become super important. Uh, automation of tasks, I think it will be very important. Connect to people in your network uh, or set up a call with somebody more senior who understands the space. Get a review of your business or organization or your job or uh, wherever you are in whatever position and try to understand what are the areas which can be automated now or in the future? It's very important for you to have clarity. What are the automations which can come in next two to three years in your area of work? Uh, upskilling all your employees are very, very important. Do upskill your employees. Talk to them about it. Talk to your students about it. Reskilling programs. And these are the these are the steps which organizations across the world have started doing. They have started doing it in the order that what is the kind of order, the graph means that this is the priority they are putting into it. So reskilling is happening big time, very, very big time, reskilling of uh, employees. Uh, this is uh, going on in mass scale in the organization. Also understanding that organizations are also becoming more agile. In fact, I was hearing, reading this government report which says that in 80s and 90s, the stock exchange average life of the company would be 40 years. But now on the stock exchange, the average life of a company is 12 years. And more agile companies come forward 
more tech driven companies which come forward and drive out the old processes right so yes uh, areas temporarily if you want you can make organizations lean and yes these are some of the uh, exercises which can be taken up inside your organization or can be shared with your mentees students about how our plan business adaptation is taking to moving towards our a new automated world so here i'll stop i'll say that what i had to share with all of you in this sunday afternoon i have done it she will say is black mirror was beautiful yes uh right so yes this was my take for 21st century skills very important i'll repeat i'll summarize lifelong learning attitude is important we cannot do away with technology let's embrace it that's the only way to do it and let's try to ensure that we are upgrading our lower level skills to higher order skills that becomes very important and we definitely saw four c's and digital skills hygiene and let's say if you have kids if you have kids your own children at home i know everybody has learned laptop and tablet but please don't call gaming as a digital skills you know gaming won't be a digital skills right kids just hooked on digital skills you know on games so playing uh, uh, pubgs are not digital skills so anything meaningful be done would become more important to be looked at and many times you know kids come and say i play pubg for 8 hours should i become game designer that's not how it works right so i remember i had a student and a parent who came to me and said uh, and parent said that hey uh, he cooks for us my son cooks for us on weekends and he likes cooking should we enroll him in hotel management and son was like no ma'am please don't do this i can't chop onions for 8 hours i can cook for my family but doing something for 8 hours you know 365 days for 30 40 years is a very different ball game so always look at that main basic digital skills gina fantastic so main basic digital skills would be lot of cloud technologies when i say cloud technologies saving and storing your data on cloud making presentations on cloud um making basic videos on cloud making basic pictures on cloud so let me give you some of the tools uh canva.com would be a very good one dropbox google drives would be good ones in fact uh i don't know if we have a group or something maybe i'll try to share all that understanding making basic videos through biteable powtoons would be good one if you want to share to people making basic website will be digital skills make booking your own domain hosting it you know making your own website would be important digital skills yes i'll call that a uh, meaningful digital skills i'll definitely call that of course all these video uh, conferences and webinars and attending them and setting up these video setups will also become an important digital skill some of them which i can broadly think maybe i'll share it with consolidon team uh, list of it and they can forward it to you more of the digital skills we have segregated on basic of uh, on basis of basic digital skills and advanced digital skills oh sheetal says please elaborate how gaming is not considered a digital skills okay uh, sheetal i did not mean that gaming is not a digital skills but what i meant is or what i was trying to say is kids hooked on one of the games for 7 8 hours and they are very addictive and then you tell go and tell them hey uh, and if you go and tell them hey why don't you learn some digital skills they will come and say i already play play game on mobile apps right so that's not a skill as in depending on they are professional gamers right if they are at that level maybe i can consider that as a gaming skills but the points which i mentioned the kind of digital skills i will be talking about that more All right. Anything else? Any comments? Any questions? Uh, hi, Surpi. This is Sheetal here again. Um, hey, okay. So, um, with regards to um the gaming point that you said, um, uh, I actually um have a different opinion about sure. it. 
sure. because uh, I, I've seen it with my elder son. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't have my camera on. Um, no. I'm actually in the office. So um, mm -hmm. I have a different opinion because I've seen my elder son play games. Um, he is very uh, interested in online gaming. Uh, of course, not with PUBG, but what I have seen is that because of how uh, the the gaming is and how it works, uh, uh, there is uh, there is a sense of uh, uh, strategic thinking and you know analysis. Uh, I've seen him do that. I've seen him how he strategizes uh, if he's supposed to you know do a move or uh, depending on the game and how he sits and analyzes the whole scenario of that game. And because he has been playing this, he all of a sudden developed an interest uh, in uh, AI. And uh, uh, luckily at this time, because of the pandemic, uh, the, his school introduced uh, robotics uh, classes yeah. for which he enrolled. And uh, um, because he was involved in this game, I, I've seen him uh, uh, kind of flourish in that, uh, in the robotics area, you know, and he's uh, learning right now to, to, uh, to do coding and to sure. build his own game. Sure. So she the fantastic thing is, you know, you answered my question or maybe I should have said, uh, you said not PUBG, you know, he's on games, but not PUBG, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is, see, it's, it's, right. it's, for me, it's, so, it's yes. going to be, it depends on how the child or, and I'm, I'm going oh, to speak so to both a child as PUBG, well as adult. And there are several games. So thankfully, maybe your son is getting your guidance and he's lucky one and he's putting it into the right effort. I'm sure he would be uh, maintaining time and control also on the games, right? He because he the way you describe, he sounds very disciplined and committed and focused, right? So yes, uh, uh, yes, he when, is. When you he said PUBG, you is. have answered it. So my entire comment no, no. was more towards uh, my PUBG. my point here is see if you're going to talk about PUBG, I would compare PUBG to Fortnite, right? Okay. The only thing is Fortnite is a bit lighter in terms sure. of how PUBG is. And my boy is actually inclined to a lot of Fortnite. He is a Fortnite gamer. And um, he uh, he's only 10 years old. But okay, when so he plays my it, statement, uh, okay? <laughs> so if you can time your, uh, if you can ask kids to time the gaming and put it in the right yeah. direction and just not play for the pure sort of, you know, indulgence, then yes, it would be a skill. Okay. All right. Right. Yes, thank you. So I think that should be my statement. All right. So thanks, Martha. Martha says, thanks a lot. Very interesting and thought-provoking presentation and discussion. Thank you, Martha. Yes. Right. So yes, okay. any more comments, Byron? Yes, Byron. Before we take on any more questions or comments, what we'll do is um, I'll request everyone, if you can switch on your videos, We'll do a quick photo for, you know, memory and social media that we were all together in here in this event. Uh, so anyone who's comfortable, of course, if you can please uh, switch on your uh, cameras and let's and fix your hair. Let's do a quick short photo. Brilliant. And I can see. Varun, let's show off our digital skills by tagging each other and put the video, <laughs> the photo, right? Absolutely, on social media. I'll give everyone 10 more seconds, if that's all right. Uh, let me see if I can change my settings to get only videos on the first page. Just give me one quick second. I need to test my di digital skills as well here. Perfect. So I'm going to uh, go uh, one, two, three, and career. Okay. So everyone has to say one, two, three, career with me. One, two, three, career. Thank you. <laughs> Perfect. One more uh, for the second page. There you go. Perfect. Thank you so much for that. If there's any other questions or comments or uh, etc., feel free. Uh, we still have two or three minutes, so feel free to ask them. Uh, in the chat. Uh, I'd like well, to ask a, a question about my uh, issue. I've been consulting to companies for 15 years and almost each of the uh, issues I have experienced the same thing. 
Uh, right now we're talking about transition, uncertainty, the digitalization and automation. Okay, these are very popular trendy words. And when you talk with the bosses who owns the companies, mainly family run companies, when you talk with these guys, you all listen to the same uh, terminology. But in fact, when you start to execute what is required to be done for the coming future to get all the precautions, you cannot uh, beat their egos. They, they like to be the one finally deciding. Okay, the terminology is perfect. The intention set to be perfect, but when you go to execution, you have always barriers, unset barriers with their egos, because those are the things that they cannot beat in, in themselves to let someone manage for them or consult for them, which they have no information about. So that is my main topic. I'm always experiencing this. Yeah. So we quickly uh, just give my thoughts because it's related to consulting yeah, sure, sure. and then you can add on. Yeah. Uh, so the mean uh, my uh, because we we work with a lot of boutique consulting firms more than more than 300 boutique consulting firms and consultants i think in terms of the future of consulting as a career is uh, i think three main things right you need to productize right so uh, rather than uh, uh, trying to give just advice uh, put it into a product package it in a manner that your client is able to implement it within their organization, right? Because it's very, very easy to give advice, right? It's very easy to give advice, right? Anybody can come and give advice today. It's very difficult to take and implement that advice, right? So when you're putting it into a framework, you're putting it into a product, you're making it easier for them to take and implement that advice, right? So they're implementing a product rather than get giving advice, right? Uh, I think the other important thing is to modularize, right? Which is uh, if you if you make your advice modular, right? So that they can implement in bite size, bite sizes, right? Uh, it makes it a lot easier for, to, for uh, business owners to comprehend and then implement within their organizations, right? I think uh, I'll leave you with those two to start with, right? Productize and modularize. Uh, and then, uh, you know, a lot of it, uh, is to do with your charm and your charisma as an advisor, right? And once they build trust with you, then of course it becomes easier for people to take and implement that uh, advice. So I, I would say uh, consulting as a career in the future is going to be about building solutions and products and then implementing those, those solutions and products for clients in, in my view, to be honest, right? Thank you. I see some of the chat is still uh, around gaming and uh, I think it's around uh, having the balance between physical and mental and I absolutely agree as well. We did a workshop on gamification on Thursday and it's fascinating how much gamification can do and gaming, uh, you know, the lessons that we learn from gaming can be applied to real life and to careers and to jobs, etc. It's really fascinating. Um, Perfect. So I don't, why don't you have a controversial statement that brings out all the participants back on tour? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Any other questions or thoughts before we close out this session? Because we've just run out of uh, time as well. Thank you, everybody. Let's connect on LinkedIn. Or you can have my contact details from Consolidate. Thanks, Varun. Thanks, team, for having me. Thank you, everyone. Pleasure. Bye-bye.